Howdy folks and welcome to the Daily Coin. My name is Rory and today is Friday, June the 17th, 2016. And I have the very distinct honor of welcoming back to the show, Mr. Eric Sprott, who is the founder and CEO of Sprott Asset Management. Eric, how you doing today? Hey Rory, real good. Uh, exciting times, man. Nothing's dull in our market, so uh been a very interesting week and... uh I think we got lots of good things to look forward to. Not that it hasn't been too bad already. It's been a pretty goddamn good time so far. Yes, it has. It's it's been uh, so far 2016 for the metals. It's been been very good and the miners as well. And absolutely. Today we're having a a, a green day. It looks like, or last time I checked, <laughs> and it's still green. And I wanted to ask you, Eric. Um, how are things, how do you see things unfolding in light of the FOMC backing out and sure. losing losing more credibility, and where yeah. do we go from here? Well, I mean, if you just look at the sort of economic uh, monetary policy backdrop, the uh, negative interest rates, the concern that negative interest rates aren't even effective, which seems to, you know, breed its way into the narrative now. Uh, when you look at the action in the, on the COMEX, which has been quite stunning, pretty well everything says that, that gold should go. So, for example, when it got up to, I guess, close to 1320 yesterday, that seemed like a very logical thing uh, to have happen. What was illogical, of course, was the, the knockdown. But, you know, I have this view of the cabal uh, that they, they are powerful. Yes. The question is, are they going to win? <laughs> and notwithstanding their power, you know, anybody can make anything happen over a short time period. It's very difficult to make something happen on a sustained basis when most everything around you is working against what you're trying to do, i.e. suppress the price of prices of gold and silver. Right. And it would appear to me that everything around them is working against them right now. It seems like it. I mean... Uh... The situation with the Brexit is breathing down their neck. You've got the new Shanghai Gold Exchange physical spot market in Yuan. That's breathing down their neck. I mean, and I wanted to ask you about that as far as in light of what you just said in regards to the COMEX and the LBMA. I mean, how do you see the Chinese? I mean, are they... They could pull the plug at any time, right? I mean, and then that would be a fly in the ointment, or yeah. they can create an arbitrage, as uh, Craig was talking yeah. about the other day on uh, Max Kaiser's show. Sure. No, that's a distinct possibility. Um, and I'm never certain, you know, we've had these rumblings of exchanges going to open up there, which haven't opened, and they were going to do great things. And uh, now we've got, you know, the Shanghai Gold Exchange. And I really don't know that I see any tangible impact. I mean, obviously the biggest thing that's happening right now is the amount of money going into the ETFs and therefore the amount of theoretical gold that's going into the ETFs. I mean, we're, we're cranking over at about a hundred tons a month here going into ETFs. And when you put that into perspective, you know, what is the, the amount of uh, gold available per month from the Western mines? less than 200 tons a month. So we have this influence this year, a new influence this year that wasn't there last year. Last year, they used to take 10 tons a month out of the ETF. This year, we're putting 100 tons in, in a 180-ton market. And is it any wonder that the price is going up? And is it any wonder that um, the ounces standing for delivery in gold in the June contract almost equals the inventory at the COMEX, the the um, registered inventory. And I see that the outstanding contracts for the July silver contract are still 450 million ounces. Now there's about uh, two weeks to go and it can fall off very, very dramatically. But, you know, there's only, what, 22 or 23 million ounces that the dealers have in silver. Uh, so that would imply if we had something like 2,000 of those 9,000, sorry, 4,000 of those 90,000 contracts stand for delivery would take all the silver out of the COMEX inventory. So I think the big story is happening amongst investors. 
that the investors are coming into the game here. And of course, we see it with whether it's Druckenmiller or Soros, uh, Grunlach, uh, Paul Singer, uh, all, all these individual smart thinkers that people, have, Carl Icahn, people that, that uh, the investors have respect of. And of course, all that has to happen is it flows into the generalist guy, the guy running Fidelity or CalPERS or some big pension fund. And that, in my mind, is going to happen. It can't sit there and not see the trends here, right? right. And one of the things, Rory, that we might even reflect on is whenever I think of Munich Re these days, having purchased gold in a negative interest rate environment, and now the guy's probably up 10% on his investment. What's every other treasurer thinking? You know, exactly. why didn't I do that? I'm the guy paying the negative interest rate, and that guy made 10%. When am I going to start doing that? Right. And so you have these, these thought leaders, if you will, right, who, who lead the way, who in fact pave the way for others to follow. So, you know, if you're the CFO of John Hancock, it's not nearly as tough a story today, is it, when the no. guy in Munich Re did it successfully. So that, I think, is the biggest thing that we have these investors coming into the precious metals markets and it's going to be, I think, quite dramatic. They're going to, it's, as I say, the Cabell can, can win uh, over the sh- short term. And they, they've got lots of power. But can they actually win the long term? And I suspect not. And that's why I'm kind of happy to see the little, I'm going to call it a mini rebound today. <laughs> Hopefully it might be a little more. And we might even lose by the end of the day, right? Right. And gold and silver is so unpredictable because of the, the forces at work. But ultimately, physical is going to work work out so i agree be patient yep and patient we have been for a number of years now and the physical demand and i'm glad to hear you talking about the, the investors because it seems like the demand for physical is relentless and not wavering one bit and when you have these smashes like we had yesterday it was it was um green and then it turned very red uh as you know and my guess is that sprott money probably moved quite a bit of gold and silver yesterday <laughs> well there's no doubt that the the buyers have learned to buy on the on the downswings i mean there's just no doubt about it right right I mean, how long can you keep buying the high knowing full well that somebody's going to likely to beat it up and you should be buying the low so yeah, that's uh, that's the trend that seems to be in place here. And and we've heard for years and years now, Eric, that um, gold uh, gold and silver do not pay interest. But if you've got a negative interest rate, yeah. and you you acquire a little bit of gold or a little bit of silver, yeah. and if it goes up one dollar, then you just yeah. made a dollar as opposed to losing money on your paper right. investment. Right. Well, Rory, you know, it always was a hollow argument, okay, yes. in my mind. It's so hollow because anybody who wants to look at the demand and supply for gold on a worldwide basis knows that the demand, look, in the last 15 years, in my mind, it's demand always exceeded supply every year, except the powers that be, the central banks, would either supply that gold out of their vaults surreptitiously or the paper guys would provide, you know, an overwhelming amount of shorts. But, um, and that's how they, they, they kept it uh, suppressed. But the demand has always been there. And of course, now this year, it's just extreme with the amount going into the ETFs. And physical. I mean, I, I think, yeah. anyway, I mean, the demand is still at, at um, is still very elevated, even, even compared to last year. But I wanted to ask you, Eric, I know that the miners are, and you are, are, have been watching the miners as well. What do you see for them for the remainder of 2016? Sure. Well, I'm glad you asked the question, Rory, because that I think is the most dynamic part of what's going on right now. Um, And I might even refer to uh, a paper uh, or an interview really that was done at, uh, at King World News with a guy named Michael Belkin. And Michael Belkin, I'm familiar with Michael because 
he had a technical service that is institutions would pay thirty five grand a year for. It was kind of a generalist a technical thing. And then and about four or five months ago, he was interviewed at King World News and the essence of the interview, look, forget the stock market. There's only gonna be one thing that works, precious metals. And at the time he was referring to some of the moves that had taken place in Australian mining companies already. And of course, the Australian mining companies went before most others because their currency got so beat up because of the Chinese uh, economic situation. And he'd already, had, at that time, had stocks that were up, I think one was up 700%, and others were up 100 200%, okay? Anyway, this is four or five months ago. He was re-interviewed by King World News last weekend. And the essence of his, his comment was, and as you know, the, uh, the UE index is up like about 120% this year. Yep. And he, reiter- he reiterated that this is the first inning of nine innings. And the gold stocks, when they rally, rally at least 500% in a, in a, in a bull market for gold stocks. And that's what I think is going to happen. That's what Michael Belkin thinks. I've talked to other people who are, not so much students of gold, but students of markets, you know, mm-hmm. that have that share that view. And I think if there's anything that people should bear in mind, it's early days. And I always say to people, well, just think for a second of gold's 2000, how much this mining company is going to make on the gold production. Or imagine that silver is $50 and imagine how much money they're going to make. And then tell me where the stock price is going to trade. And there's not too many places in the investment world, you get the chance to make 100%. But this is 500%. And you don't want to miss it. These things don't come around too often. So I think if there's any message that we want to leave to your listeners is that, you know, stay with the gold stocks. Don't get shaken out. Everything seems to be going our way in the metals other than these little, you know, blips in the market from time to time that are all engineered. I mean, if somebody can't see that that's engineered, then they're not looking. So. The real sustainable trends are what are people doing with their money, particularly right. the institutions, who now, by the way, they're all locked out of the, the precious metal market. The stocks have gone up so much, they, they all they probably only have a weighting of uh, 1%. I'm talking about Canada now. The weighting is already 7 or 8%, okay? And in, this, in the S&P, I think the weighting is like 0.2 or 0.3. Most people don't own none. They're not there. They, they're going to miss it. Um and luckily, some other people are have been smart enough, maybe even non-Americans, come in and buy these things. And buy them and heavy. They're going to be left out. So anyway, anyway I think it's, it's, it's an exciting outlook in my mind. I would agree wholeheartedly. And, and with that, if you don't mind, Eric, uh, what are you doing with your money right now? I mean, if you don't mind me asking. <laughs> well, that's a great question because <laughs> I, was, I was very lucky, Rory, okay? So in the middle of uh, last year, which was the perfect time to buy gold things, I bought a 200,000-ounce producer in Nevada out of bankruptcy for all of $10 million. Okay. Wow. And that was for 80% of the company. And, uh, you know, a 200,000-ounce producer, if you didn't have any, uh, any uh, warrants on it, trades at $800 million, Okay. Now, we still have some warts, but we're... We're, we're, we're picking the warts off here, and so that should be very exciting. Uh, as you know, I have a big position in Kirkland Lake Gold. I own about uh, 7 or 8% of that. I recently bought about 17% of a company called New Market Gold. In fact, I'm closing on, uh, I think, about 10% of that company next week. Uh, so that was a fair chunk of change I put into that. Uh, so I've been a buyer. I bought uh, small positions in two silver companies, uh, both with positions over 10%, Alexco and Exelon. So I've been busy. It I've been busy like buying. <laughs> I've been busy buying. I want, I want to get in front of those institutions, believe me. You know, I'll, I want to sell to them. Exactly. Exactly. Because they're coming. They're they coming. Are. They'll be coming. Don't worry. <laughs> yep. They are coming. And last question, Eric, and I'll let you get back to your morning. Mergers and acquisitions seem to be already seem to be coming into focus. Do you see 
that kind of heating up as the year goes on? Or are we going to be into 2017 or even 2018 before that really gets heated up? Well, um, I'll just say as chairman of Kirkland Lake, okay, and we, we made an acquisition of a company called St. Andrews that closed on January 25th, which was a great time to close, by the way, because the stock set their low on January 19th. Um, I profess to be in uh, kind of the stealing business. You know, you steal value because yep. people aren't aware of the value, and you got to get in early. Now, I would say that the stealing of value is a lot less opportune today, you know, because every every stock's gone up. In fact, probably the worst stocks have gone up the most, right? Uh, <laughs> most most two cent stocks are probably trading at ten. In other words, they're up five hundred percent. Yeah. I I mean I don't own things like that, but uh, I can assure you most of them have gone up. So but to answer your question directly, of course it's going to continue because companies need to grow. If you can find something that's cheaper than let's say your market value as a company, uh, maybe Maybe you can find something at four times cash flow and you're trading at eight times cash flow. Of course, you're going to make the acquisition if you like the your body and the outlook and all that other things being equal. So I would think there's lots of people on the hunt uh, for these various uh, gold stocks that are out there. That's what I see as well. So, but I'm not going to take up any more of your time. I know you're, you're a busy man and you've got a lot going on this morning. So. And we've been speaking yeah. with uh, Eric Sprott, uh, CEO and founder of Sprott Asset Management. Eric, I certainly appreciate all your time and all your knowledge. Very, my pleasure. And uh, I always uh, look forward to listening to your interview. So keep up the great work. You're very helpful to everybody in the space. Well, thank you so much for saying so. And I will, uh, I will speak again in the not-too-distant future. Okay, Rory. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.